Hey, welcome back. I want to talk to you about making this your best quarter yet, your best 90 days yet. One of the things that I am fanatical about is constantly reworking my plan in the sense of looking at, you know, what's this next 90 days? And I find that so many people, what we do as entrepreneurs, what we do as leaders in our companies, and maybe you're an executive, maybe you're a professional, or maybe you're just really on your own path to personal growth, is if you've been studying this stuff for a while, you probably set goals for kind of the start of the year and what your yearly goals are going to be. But then so many people after that, they never revisit it again. What I found is that very high performing people, they've got yearly goals. Yes, they're dialed into then their next 90 days. Some of them like to do it on month to month, week to week basis. What I found though, is that if we can dial in your next 90 days, we can really begin to make a transformation in your life. So there's five things that I want to start with you on that will help you in making this your best 90 days. The first process that I want to jump into, it's a process that I like to evaluate in my life regularly. And it is a real simple process of reviewing. And we're, I'm going to keep it real basic today in terms of what can you do to begin reviewing right now. And the things that I like to focus on are I like to start with what's not working. Now, I want to preface this. Many times when you're in an achiever kind of mindset or you're on your way to becoming one, there can be a tendency to focus on what you're not doing and, and in a negative context, I guess. I'm not talking about what's wrong in terms of beating yourself up. That's not what I'm referencing. What I am talking about is what's not working in my life and business. And sometimes we have to take a good hard look at that. You know, we might have something, maybe a bad habit that we've gotten into over the last several months, maybe several years that is preventing us from being our best. Perhaps it's, uh, you know, not getting up when we want to. Maybe it's we've neglected our health. Maybe it's um, we're, we're drinking too much or we're scrolling social too much or, you know, we're uh, eating too much sugar. I don't know. Or, or I've got a bad habit of putting off the most important work until later in the day. But there's something almost always that's not working for us. And in my recent years, I've learned a lot that after 17 years of being a fanatic in personal growth, self-mastery, and really developing into our best selves, so much of what I had done in the beginning was how could I add more things on, which is valuable. What I've learned recently, though, is a big part of it is what do I need to let go of? And so this is a great question for you to take some time and reflect on is what's not working for me right now. And I don't want to list the 10 different things because again, it's not a session to beat ourselves up. It's not a session to feel depressed about it or, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing all this, but one or two things that aren't working, you know, Hey, this isn't working for me anymore. Right. Or maybe the time that I, you know, I, I don't know just how much time I'm dedicating to my business isn't working for me in the sense of maybe I'm not putting enough time and energy in, or again, I'm, I'm not putting the energy into my health. That's not working for me. Or, or, um, you know, I'm overly obsessed on social media. I'm on Instagram or TikTok all the time. There's things that aren't working for us. So what I would do is pick one or two of those things. This is not working for me anymore. I'm going to work on this 90 days on letting that go or changing that. And then we want to come up with a bit of a game plan on what we're going to do with it. <clears throat> so let's say you've neglected your health and you haven't been focused on that at all. There's two kind of schools of thought of what we can do with this. And this works with adding anything new uh, with subtracting to some people are the jump right into the freezing cold water kind of person. And they go full bore all out on this. I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and this. <clears throat> and that can work for some. It can. What I found for most people is it doesn't. The gradual approach to change for most people seems to be more effective. It seems to be more sustainable. When I work with my coaching clients, we often work with that in terms of where can we start with small, simple changes. So you've been neglecting your health as an example or neglecting your business. What are the simple little things that you could shift. So if right now uh, I haven't been prioritizing my health, you might say, well, I'm going to start going to the gym seven days a week, every day in the next 90 days. And that can be really valuable. I mean, to build a 90 day challenge like that can be incredibly valuable. And if you've tried those kind of things in the past with limited success, then if you've completely neglected your health, maybe you start with this. I'm going to start 
really prioritizing my health this next 90 days. And it's going to start with every day this month going for a 20 minute walk. Now, if that feels like too much, then you might say, well, I'm going to do it three times a week. If I completely neglect it, right? Or maybe I'm going to do, you know, I don't know, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week, or I'm going to go twice a week, or I'm going to start, you know, week one, I'm going to go twice, week two, twice, week three, twice, week four, three times. You get the idea. So we, we figure out what's not working and then we come up with a plan to shift it. So the first review is what's not working for me. The second review is what has been working for me. And don't overlook this. Don't say, oh, no, 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 I already got that stuff down. Again, because of the way our mind's been wired for negativity, a negativity bias for almost all of us, we have a tendency to undermine all the great things that you are doing and overemphasize the things that you're missing. We want to come from a little bit more objective approach of what's not working and I can change it, but we also want to come from a positive reinforcement approach of what is working so that I can keep doing that in my life. So what is working for me? What am I doing well? What are the things that I want to continue doing into this next 90 days? So that first process is really reviewing. The second process is to revisit the vision. Goals without a vision tend to, they can work for you, um, but you can get into a trap of just achieving goals, achieving goals, and you're not really sure why I'm achieving those goals. So we want to revisit the vision process. And I have an entire process I take people through, kind of like a vision mastery process where we build out your whole life vision over the next three years, uh, which we're not going to do today. <clears throat> but if you've been listening to the show for a while, if you haven't, I'd recommend just going back. I think even episode one is, is, is a basics in uh, creating your vision. But revisit your vision on paper. Go and set it in stone on paper, in this, not in stone on paper, in ink on paper. There you go. And write that down. And just the act of taking the time to really revisit your vision, even if you think, oh, I did that before, I've done it, you have to keep in mind is that we have a tendency as well to focus on our problems of the now, where we're at, you know, what's not going on in our life. Vision is so powerful because it takes us out of where we've been or where we are. And it puts us onto that mental and emotional plane of being in our future. And when we begin to move into our future, our future begins to move towards us. So every time you think of the future vision of your life, not only do you move towards it because you're more inspired, but it begins to move towards you. And the more we do this, the more we rehearse our future, the more we mentally imagine and visualize it, we are connecting with it on a mental, emotional, and spiritual level. And we begin to be compelled and where we are drawn to it and it is drawn to us. So I challenge you to revisit that vision. Obviously, the next thing we're going to focus on is building out some goals, building out some goals for the next 90 days. What? experience has taught me is less is more and the simpler the better you know sometimes we come up with again 10 or 12 different goals we want to hit this quarter and there's very few people that can focus on that many things at once i found that most of us were pretty good at focusing on maybe one to three key goals that we want to hit so you might have a bunch of goals that you're thinking you want to do but i would really narrow it down to what are those you know one two or three that are the most important for this quarter and in help and narrowing it down, you might ask, which of these, if I achieve this one, would have the biggest impact on the rest of my goals and vision? And that can help you. So you narrow it down to a goal for the next 90 days. Where do you want to be 90 days from now? What do you want to have accomplished 90 days from now? Now, that could be a specific result you want to create, certain amount of uh, business you want to generate, income you want to generate, you want to grow your team by X amount, you want to have X amount of sales, you want to, you know, you can do that. It can also be process driven in the sense of, I want to have uh, done this, this, and this. So not a specific result in the sense of how many sales per se, but instead, I want to have completed X amount of client meetings. I want to uh, have prospected X amount of people. I want to have worked out X amount of times. I want to have, um, anyways, you get the idea, right? You get the idea. So your goals will be the next. And then when we start to move into the next area, we kind of did a little bit of it of what's not working for me, what is working for me. But our next phase is what are the one or two 
new habits I want to develop. And habits are a wonderful thing because when they truly become a lifelong habit, it becomes so easy to continue repeating that. Now, habits can work for us. Habits can work against us depending on what kind of habit it is. Obviously, some propel us towards a greater future and some pull us back to regressing towards where we don't want to be. So in your life right now, in this next 90 days, what would be the one thing that if you really worked on developing it as a habit would make the greatest impact in your life? What would be the one thing? And when you start to reflect on that, and then you think about, you know, it might be this. If I started making calls first thing in the morning for my business, if I uh, reached out to X amount of clients, if I started working out X amount of days a week. But what's that one thing for you? You know, what's that one thing? If I started getting up at this time of day, you know, if I started a meditation practice, I don't know. But you probably have an idea. And often it's the one that we're a little bit afraid to step into. You know, jo Joseph Campbell said the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So often it's the habit that we're most scared to commit to. You know, sometimes we want to take the easy way out. Well, I'll start reading every day. Now, by the way, if you don't read at all, I think that's a good habit. So please don't take offense to that. Uh, but sometimes that's kind of a, a, a real simple one to avoid doing the work of what's necessary for our, our next level of life. And I just really want to encourage you to really think about and address and really dive into what that next habit for you is. Lastly, is turning it all into a plan. We can take all of this stuff, we can talk about all this stuff, but if we don't physically do the mental work where we sit down and think about this and we map it out and then we don't review it, odds are we're not gonna change. How often in your life have you had the best of intentions? You know, you've heard a great podcast, you read a great book, you went to a great seminar, workshop, class, whatever, and you thought, yeah, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do that later. And then you never do it. Or you do create the plan, but never, you never review the plan. And I just think that uh, we could probably really benefit from taking the time to craft the plan on paper, to then review it daily and weekly, and start to program it into our mind. When we begin to do this by reviewing the plan, you're paying more attention to the things that you want to be doing and the things you don't want to be doing. You're paying more attention to the vision. You're paying more attention to the goals. You're noticing the habits that you want to form and odds are you're probably beginning to track it too, which could be a whole nother subject. So I just really want to encourage you to take stock. Where have you been? Where do you want to go? Let's make a game plan for the next 90 days. So this next 90 days, no matter when you're hearing this, no matter when you're seeing this, that this next 90 days can be the best 90 days of your life, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thanks for being a part of this. Do me a favor. If you're new, drop me a comment, leave a review. I love it. I love hearing from you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.